This is the third part of a series of screencasts where I explain how to in, how to integrate with Linux.net, how to write apps, and how to use its API, and what sort of capabilities we have in the system. So, in this specific, in a previous video, we have created an application. We embedded this application to Linux.net as a user interface, as an external user interface. In this video, I will explain how to create a permanent uh, postback. Uh, token. Effectively, when the user installs your application, uh, it can have a user interface and it, you might need a permanent API token. This is very useful when you have an uh, application that comprises of user interface and some kind of service that constantly has to run um, and talk to Linworks uh, web API. So it's not just relying on the user opening up the user interface to generate the temporary token. So let's go ahead and actually review what we've done in the previous previous video. So in Linux.net, I have created a so-called My Awesome App, and I've embedded this application onto the user interface right there. So when I click when as a user I click this app, a temporary token will be generated, will be passed to my application, and this application will be able to talk back to Linux.net using that temporary token um, to create one-time session. W imagine if my awesome app needs to be able to access Linux on a periodic basis, like for example every hour it needs to go into my Linux.net system and you know get a list of orders and create some dashboards, all this kind of stuff. So I need so-called permanent token. Uh, we call this external application token. So there is a way to modify the manifest, uh, application manifest, to tell that there is an additional module and put in that additional module a specification to send that permanent token back to uh, back to us. Let's uh, have a look at the diagram to see how this process actually works. Okay, imagine the user installs the application, so they will go into App Store, for example, or they will follow the link if the application is not in the uh, Linux application store. They will follow the installation link, and this has, installation link can have a tracking uh, ID, but we're not concerned about that yet. So effectively, user installs the application. The Linux.net installer would look at the application manifest, will find the external uh, application module in there, and if the external application module contains the postback parameter, it will send the token that it has generated, the permanent application token, plus the tracking that you have specified in the URL for the installation, it will send all of this, uh, th this as query string parameters into the postback URL. You can take the token that has been sent in the postback URL and do the authorized by application. This authorized by application method will return a base session. This base session will contain Linux ID and the permanent token is the one that has been specified in a temp in the postback URL. So you can record this permanent token against Linux ID in some kind of account storage. When the next time the uh, user opens up uh, the application with the user interface from Linux.net, for example, a temporary token will be generated and the, use, and the system will authorize like we described in the previous method using the authorized by application. It will get the same base session that will contain user ID. You can find this user ID in your account storage and you can get the permanent token back. So Linux ID is a unique identifier of users in our system, so you can use this to match temporary tokens to permanent tokens. Okay, let's go and open up our source code of the application that we have created in the previous um, session. And what we need to do is we need to create uh, this account storage uh, class. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new class in my models. I'm going to call this account. I'm just going to go and paste the uh, code that I've written before. Uh, 
Right, I'm going to go and paste some code that I've written before. This account class comprises of uh, some fields, email, permanent token, this is the token that we, authorization, uh, web API authorization token that is permanently available, uh, when the application have been well, has been installed, and this is a unique identifier of Linux system. Then we have a method to save this uh, class as a JSON uh, onto a onto a disk just as a as a file and we're going to call this file by the name of the Linux ID so we can easily go and load this uh, account uh, from the given Linux ID and we have a method to load the JSON file we just specify the directory where our data storage is and a Linux unique identifier and this this process will just go and find that file with uh, Linux unique identifier in the name and we'll load all the text and serialize it into account class. So the next step is to create a uh, endpoint which will receive uh, the token. So this is our postback URL. I'm going to do it as simple as creating a new web page, web form effectively. I'm going to call this install ASPX can delete all of the HTML from it because we don't need it. All we care about is this page to respond with um, with success or uh, if we have any errors, for example, if we couldn't or if the token hasn't been provided or the we couldn't authorize using that token, uh, then we respond with 403 error, which is a bad request which means that the application won't be installed. So when a user trying to install the application and the postback URL doesn't work, the system won't let the user to actually have this application installed. The Linux system won't let this uh, application to be installed. Okay, so I'm going to go and put some code to manage the, uh, to manage the query string uh, parameters that has been sent in this install ASPX. So I'm going to paste some, so I'm just going to go and paste some code uh, into this, so the, you know, it saves me typing during the video. So effectively what I've done is I've specified some constants. Uh, so this is my application ID, application secret. This is needed for uh, authorized by application method. And data storage directory is where I'm going to be storing my um, account files. Okay, so the first thing is I check whether the token has been provided in the URL and if it's not, I'll throw a bad request error. Secondly, I will convert this URL uh, query string parameter token into a unique identifier, GUID. Um, and if it doesn't work, I'll throw an error. If, uh, for example, this query string parameter isn't a unique identifier, which it should be, uh, it should be uh, throwing an error. Secondly, uh, if it is a unique identifier, I will call authorized by application from the SDK to get the base session. If the base session is null, which means uh, the authorization didn't work, for example, the token is wrong or my application ID is wrong or application secret, this method will return null in a base session. Therefore, something went wrong, so I'm just going to go and throw bad request uh, error back and uh, because the postback URL returns an error, the application won't be installed. However, however, if the base session returned a class and that class is actually uh, contains things like email address of a customer who installed this application and um, as you can see this base session dot ID, this is a unique identifier of a system that got installed, I can basically put it in my account class and save that account class in our data storage. Okay, as simple as that. Don't need to do anything else. So let's go ahead and actually change uh, my default ASPX. So this is the page that gets loaded uh, when the user opens up uh, external user interface uh, in Linux.net. And here I'm just going to put a new uh, just 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 a label to display the permanent token that was generated when we installed the application. Right, I'm going to go and change my default ASPX page, just the code that gets loaded. Um, 
So I've just inserted some so I just went ahead and inserted some uh, code that I've previously written. So first of all, I've inserted the data storage directory. So this is just a constant that specifies where my data storage is. Of course, a normal application will store all of this in the application settings of some sort. But in my case, just want to make it simple. So I just put it in constants uh, in code directly. And then I've added this method here, which uh, instantiates the account class and calls the static method called load that will load this um, account uh, class from a file. Uh, so let's go and have a look at this method again. So effectively it checks whether I have uh, the account uh, JSON in the data storage and will look up that account uh, file by a unique identifier of a user in linux.net by linux id effectively if the file exists i just load it into the uh, text and then i convert that text into account using json then i check if the account is not null obviously if it's not null which means that we actually have this account uh, file and uh, then we just basically output the permanent token on the screen so what we can do now is we can actually uh, start this application up in, uh, in debug mode and test that it actually works. So let's go ahead and start this application. Okay, when I start the application, uh, obviously my permanent token label here will be empty. But what we're interested in, uh, in is testing the install ASPX page. So this is our post bug. So I'm going to go ahead and actually change this URL to install ASPX and in a token parameter, I'm going to specify exactly the same token that I'm using for testing my application. And remember, I can go into my uh, linux.net apps, linux.net account into my application. And uh, what I can do is I can install by application. Let's open this link using incognito mode and log in using exactly the same account as we're using for development. I should be able to see a development version uh, in the selection mode. If I install it, I get a authorization token. I can use, the, this is going to be a permanent Linux Web API authorization token. So I can effectively take this token and use it for my development, just to specify that token and the query parameter. So I'm going to jump back into uh, this install ASPX. Uh, I'm going to go and set a breakpoint on a page load so that we can trace exactly what's going going on. All right, so execute that page and now we are in this install ASPX page. This is pretty much exactly what Linux.net installer, application installer would do. It will call this URL, uh, postback URL, with the parameters. So effectively uh, in token, it will basically generate the permanent uh, application token and we'll stick it in the parameter. So let's go through this code, step over, we can convert this token into a uh, unique identifier, yes. Then we're going to do the authorized by application. Okay, it returns a session. Let's go and have a look what we have in this session. What we do have is an email address of a customer that installs this install this application. Uh, it's unique identifier, and uh, the permanent token is actually what we have received in the URL. So disregard what it actually send us back in here, because this is going to be a session token only. We don't need it at all. We need what has been sent in the uh, URL. Okay. So next we create a class called account and stick all of those things that we actually need to save in this class and save it. Let's continue. So next time when the user and okay, let's actually gonna have a look at our data storage to see, this is where I store my files. So the name of the file would be the unique identifier of a user. It's going to have a look at this file and effectively it contains a JSON where it has got the email address of a customer, then the permanent token. So this is something we can use at any time to access Linux API. Uh, 
and the unique identifier of a user inside this uh, class as well, as well as in the name of the file. So now when we start the application itself, so I'm going to go into default ASPX, so this is the starting page, I'm going to go ahead and set the breakpoint right after we've done all of these other things, because we covered that in the previous, uh, in the previous session. I'm going to go ahead and execute this. As you can see, it created a session. And we can go and have a look what we have in this session. So this is uh, this is a temporary using the temporary token that has been specified in the URL. It did the authorization, and now we have the session. And in the session, we have uh, authorization uh, authorization token that will be used to access uh, Linux .NET API. And uh, we also have Linux ID as part of this base session being sent back to us when we're doing the authorized by application. We can use this Linux ID to go and fire, uh, to go and load the account uh, information about this customer who actually opened up this application. In my case, I do have that account because I saved it in during the installation. And I have a permanent token there. So I can just gonna go and display this permanent token on the screen. Okay, now that I've got the application working and uh, working locally and tested, I can go ahead and deploy this. So I've got the routine that will actually publish this onto the web service straight away. So I'm just gonna go and publish that. And the next step for me is to go and modify the manifest, uh, application manifest, uh, to tell Linworks.net uh, when it installs the application to send this permanent token to the postback URL. So let's open my auth demo uh, application manifest. It's going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. And effectively, this is my application manifest as it looks at the moment. Effectively, let's go through this again. So we've got modules and then modules is an array of different modules that my application comprises of. And uh, this first module is called external user interface and it's got a parameter uh, here called URL uh, that instructs Linux to open a specific URL. Okay, what I need to do is I need to add another module into this manifest, and uh, this module is going to be called uh, the type of this module will be external application only. So that tells Linworks that uh, this application comprises of user interface and a permanent uh, application that accesses the uh, Linux.NET account all the time. So in here, I have a parameter called postback URL, and the value of this parameter is the URL where I'm going to be sending my token. Now, this URL has to contain token and this square bracket, curly bracket, the actual token itself. So this is where we're going to insert the token, and it has to have a parameter called tracking as well. Uh, so those two parameters have to be in there, otherwise the application manifest won't save. So if I stick that in and uh, save this application now, so I'm saving this uh, as a development version, okay? So I haven't rolled this out yet. So let's go ahead and open up in incognito mode as if I'm installing this application. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Okay, so imagine I'm installing it as a user without the external application in place. So what's going to happen, it will give me a token to copy and paste into my application. Okay, whereas if I'm going to go ahead and install the new version that we just deployed, the development version, so this is the ID for the development version. If I try to install this, the installer will detect that the application manifest now has got external application module, and that external application module contains the postback URL. So instead of displaying this post uh, permanent token on the screen for the user to copy and paste into your application, it will send this permanent token back to the application using the postback URL. So let's go and hit install. And as you can see, it didn't give me the token to paste back into my 
uh, application to copy and paste. Uh, what it did, it sent the permanent user, the permanent token, to my postback URL directly. Now, if I go into my application, into in Linux.net, and open my awesome app, I should be able to see this permanent token saved on the account already.